if you're thankful to be in the Lord's house, we count it an honor and a privilege every time we're able to gather together and be in the Lord's house. See you here tonight. Let's look to the Lord and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord would grace us tonight with his presence. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the joy that it is, Lord, of ours, Lord, that we can be, Lord, once again gathered in your house. Lord, to be reminded, dear God, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning, and being the head of the church. Hallelujah. No matter what goes on, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, Lord, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, the great shepherd, Lord, will watch over his sheep, take care of them. Asking your Lord to minister, Lord, we pray, Lord, in this service tonight, in every song that is sung, every word that is said, may you be glorified, lifted up, honored, given praise, for we ask it in Christ's wonderful name, and everybody say it, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. If you would stand with us tonight, sing along, we're going to be singing on about the blood tonight. Anybody thankful for the blood? The blood that Jesus Christ, he shed for us, praise God, there on Calvary. Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His saving grace? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's power in the blood. Hallelujah. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. And it reaches to the highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest valley. blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. For his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. But his blood was precious blood, for it washed the sins of man. And his blood, it heals my body, 
and sets my spirit free. And I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. For his blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb, but his blood was precious blood. For it washed the sins of man, and his blood, it heals my body, and sets my spirit free. And I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. Oh, the blood of Jesus, all oh, the blood of Jesus, all oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow one more time, oh, the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow, and it reaches to the highest mountain, and it flows to the gives me strength from day to day it will never lose it will never lose oh no it'll never lose it's power hallelujah God bless you tonight for being in the house of the Lord. What an honor that it is for us to be here and see all of you. It's good to have Brother Mike Carraway here with us tonight. And Sister Edie playing for us. Brother Jeremy there is uh, off uh, in a manner. But anyway, we are glad that you are here. He needs a break every once in a while, don't he? Amen. Praise God. But so glad that you are here Tonight, we just believe God's got something special for us. Anybody come tonight expecting? Expecting. Hallelujah. I believe he's got something there special for us if we come expecting tonight. I come to bless him, and I don't believe you can bless him without him blessing you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We want to look to the Lord and go to the Lord in prayer. You may be seated. And uh, take your request before him. Maybe you have an uplifted hand request. You'd like to just signify to the Lord knows that need tonight. There are many needs. I have some unspoken unspe uh, needs tonight that I'd just like for you to lift up. The Lord knows all about those needs. We get calls. How many of you know that the pastor gets calls? We find out about certain things. And you know sometimes, Brother Mark, you just don't know how to handle things. You don't know how to take care of it. I've had people to come up to me, preacher, you need to do something about that. And I'm thinking, well, wow, uh, you know, that's a nice way of saying things, isn't it, there that way. And I, I've very kindly looked at them. I said, well, I'm doing, I am doing something about it. I'm taking it to the Lord. <laughs> I'm taking it to the Lord. You know, James 1 and 18, I think we forgot about that scripture. Anybody remember what that one is? Be swift. To hear, slow to speak. I, I think we got that King kind of reversed around. Be, be swift to speak. No, that ain't what it said. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I want to I wanna do my best there to deal with whatever conflict or whatever comes for God to give me the wisdom. Yes. And that spirit in Galatians 6 and 1, if somebody's overtaken. And there's folks hurting today. You know what the devil would like nothing better for us to get at one another. There ain't no time for folks to get at one another. It's time for folks there to get where they 
They need to repent there and, and get back. You know what? I think this would take care of all of it, Sister Florida, if we put self back on the altar and let him be crucified. He got to be crucified. I think sometimes he gets resurrected back up. That, that nature there. You know, I'm going to tell that person a piece of my mind. I'm going to lay my sanctification down. I, you know, some folks look at it that. I don't know. Be careful to lay it down that you don't get it back. <laughs> Oh, my, I don't know about that there, just picking, laying, picking it up. But anyway, Lord knows those needs. Any other outspoken, let's remember Sister Odessa Barber in our prayers. God will continue to minister to her. Also, Sister Betty Lasseter, we want to lift her up in prayer. Sister Jean Allen there, Sister Huffman, let's remember her, that God would touch her. Sister Rosa Pollard, God would touch her uh, in a special way. Other needs there. Anyone else? <laughs> yes, Brother Kevin. Let's remember uh, Brother Keith, Heath, Heath in our prayers, double new morning, that God would touch him and bring healing into his body. God knows those needs tonight. Anyone else? Yes, Sister Kim. <coughs> Let's remember, <coughs> remember them in prayer also. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, Sister April. Yes, yes. Remember Sister Thelma tonight. She had a good day yesterday, but I, that it kind of goes and comes there, but God's able to bring healing to her. Anyone else? Yes, let's remember them. I do remember there far as I was sharing with it <coughs> this morning. Uh, that's number 30, and... Uh, so I don't know whether that's the last one or not, but it sure has been an active. Well, it's, it's, it's prophetical. Anybody know that's prophetical? So, well, how can you prove? Well, the, I'll just tell you what the Scripture says, Luke chapter 21, and Paul lists uh, ten things that would occur before Jesus would come back on the Mount of Olives or come back in great power and great glory. And I believe the fifth, the sixth one there is the seas and waves roaring. If there ain't a roaring, I don't know what is. And then the other one is, is there. I believe we're in that. Men's hearts failing them for fear. There's some fearful sights that are coming. But the Lord said that these things were going to come. But you know what he said? Be of good cheer. Be at peace. There, he's our peacemaker. I'm thankful I don't have to walk around wringing my hand. What we're, I'm just going to trust him. I've trusted him for 50 years. I ain't going to stop now. I'm just going to keep on, Brother Hartley, looking to Jesus. Amen. Anyone else? Let's take these needs to the Lord in prayer. Brother Mike Carraway, would you lead us to the Lord in prayer tonight? Gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, tonight for your blessings, your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, you've given to us tonight to be in the house of God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, for each one was able to gather here tonight and those that would gather with us, Lord, on live stream. We pray for them and in their homes, Lord. I pray that they will be encouraged and enriched and strengthened, dear Lord, we pray in this hour. Lord, in times that we're living in, Lord, Lord, I'm thankful, dear God, to know, Lord, that my God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Lord, there are people not knowing what to do, which way to turn, but I'm thankful, Lord, tonight that I can trust and hold on to an unchanging hand in changing times. Oh, hallelujah, in a shaky world that we serve an unshaky God. Lord, I just pray, Lord, your blessings upon your people in a special way. Touching them, Lord, we pray here tonight. Not no one will be able to leave at the same time. Lord, we pray for Sister Jean Allen. You'll continue to strengthen her and touch her, Lord. We're not able to visit her, Lord, but we know, Lord Jesus, that you promise to never leave us, never forsake us. We pray, Lord Jesus, for those, Lord, that have been in, uh, uh, affected, Lord, through the storm, those lives that were were killed, Lord, in the storm this week. We pray for those families. Pray for that family, dear God, that lost that 20-year-old daughter. Pray, Lord Jesus, that they will, Lord, realize, Lord, their need for you today, those that are not saved. Lord, in our community, in our city, dear God, across this land, this state, oh God, we pray, dear God, for America, Lord Jesus. Lord, oh, her eyes will be open. 
Her ears will be open, Lord God, to hear, Lord Jesus, Lord. You'll give them a hunger, desire to read the Word of God again. Lord, we pray, Lord, for every uplifting hand request. Is it one of that you'll minister to that need, Lord, tonight? Sister Odessa Barber needs healing in her body. Touch her, Lord, tonight. Sister Loretta Huffman asking you, Lord Jesus, Lord, such a precious lady. Sister Pollard, Lord, you'll continue to touch these ladies and ministering to them, those that got COPD, Lord, in their lungs. Sister Thelma, Lord, we pray, Mazingo, asking you for healing in her body. You're greater, Lord Jesus, than COPD. You're greater, dear God. Almighty God, mighty God, you've already paid the price. We just come, Lord Jesus, to receive tonight. Give thanks to you. Lord, as the satirian said, just speak the word only. We'll give you praise. Give you praise in Christ's holy name. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sister Kim's coming around to sing. Don't forget tonight we still have our basket out there. Thank you for your giving to the Lord and to the work of the Lord. I believe our, our uh, projector has come in. So when, uh, there when Brother Shane gets back, he's got the cat five. So when we run it there, we're going to run two wires together and get it hooked up to HDMI, I believe it is, so that they got more high technology today, and so for all that kind of stuff. But we need one with a stronger lens on it than what we had up here. It's getting weak, and those folks in the back, and I know me, my eyesight ain't quite what it used to be, and uh, <coughs> so, I, you know, you just look in there. Yeah, I think I can see that. I believe that's what it says. <laughs> but we hope it'll be stronger, and you'll be able to see it, and maybe we'll get it hooked up in a couple of weeks. God bless you. Worship with Sister Kim as she comes. Whispers draw closer to me. Leave this world far behind. There are new heights to climb and a new place in me you will find. For whatever. to you, Lord. That's what I'll be willing to do. For whatever it takes to be more like you, Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. Take my houses, take my land, change my dreams and my plans. Lord, I'm placing my whole life in your hands. And if you call me someday to a land far away, Lord, I'll go. And your will obey Whatever it takes 
to draw closer to you, Lord. That's what I'll be willing to do. For whatever it takes for my will to break, Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. I'll be willing to do Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, what a precious Lord we serve. As she's singing that song, I was, I was reminded and couldn't help but... Uh, be moved by that song because that was the last song I sung before I went into the ministry at Snow Branch Church of God over 30 years ago, whatever it takes. And I'm afraid, and I was thinking about that, I said, Lord, I need to be reminded of that every once in a while of there. Uh, I don't regret a mile I've traveled for the Lord. Don't regret a time I've trusted in his word. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, so good to have you in the house of the Lord. Good to have Brother Mark family tonight. Have your Bible. Turn with me to Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. <coughs> Amos chapter 8. If you could stand for the reading of the word. Verse 11 says these words. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. I want to deal on a spiritual, the spiritual famine tonight. Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness to me. Thank you for your blessings you've bestowed on us. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, this morning, Lord, that of your promises, being the head, being the head of the church, we're just asking you, Lord Jesus, to touch us tonight for the next few moments. That, Lord, we will speak, Lord, we pray. Lord, not under, Lord Jesus, Lord, our own initiative, but under the initiative and power of the Holy Ghost. As holy men before us spake, as, Lord, as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost, Lord, I need, Lord, none less than that same tonight. Touch your servant. You've called me to do that which is impossible for me to do apart from, Lord, you, from the anointing. I will praise you. I will honor you. I will give you all glory for that which will be accomplished in Christ's name. And everybody said amen. This famine that I'm going to talk about tonight could have been avoided. How many of you know that there are times that famines can be avoided? There are certain things that we do. This spiritual famine that it's hard for us to comprehend a famine, especially when we're, we have plenty, we're talking about in the natural sense. While we may not have all, we may not have all we want, you know, how many, of, how many of you want some things that you don't have? Anybody in here? Well, I don't see many hands uh, there. I mean, there are certain things sometimes we can't, we can't afford or there have, but most of us have what we need. 
Am I, am I right? Most of us have what we need. But this here was the case with the nation of Israel that was under Jeroboam. Israel's now living in the height of prosperity. And, uh, but they're stooped deep into idolatry. There is a more rottenness here. Was the land was swearing. They were stealing. Injustice, oppression, robbery, adultery, and murder. Kind of sounds like America, doesn't it? They had turned to Baal worship. It's already here in America now and adopted many of the abominable practices of the Canaanite. And they're running, it's running rapid here in that land. But during this time here, God, through this time, God had sent them Elijah. He had sent them Elisha. sent them Jonah. And all their preaching that they had preached to them had been to no avail. Israel here has now become so hardened in its idolatry. Sounds like America. Weakness, their fate would now prove in, irreversible. And I don't know if we're not there, church, there, here in America, there. The weakness has become so rapid in this nation that judgment is irreversible. Be the, it's going to end up being far as a room, I, ruin. I do believe that God is going to give a revival where there are people that are praying and seeking the Lord. But I can tell you, my friend, there are a lot of folks that do not want revival in America. They want their evil, their wickedness. But I thought about this here. As I, God had sent them uh, there, uh, Elijah and Elisha and Jonah. But notice the love of God and how far reaching that it is. It's pure, it's measureless here and strong that God raises up Amos here, a herdman or a, she a shepherd to, to, to warn them of God's approaching judgment. And I still believe that there are a few preachers there, not that many on the air, that are telling and warning America of the judgment that is about to fall. And this is what Amos was doing on Israel, the, the nations that were around them. And he was telling them, unless they repent of their idolatry, their immorality, their injustice here, they were going to, uh, uh, they were going to uh, suffer the consequences. And you know where the most opposition come from, from Amos, was there in the king's palace. It was Amaziah the priest. But still here, Amos, notice he remains faithful to God. He continues to be bold in reproving them of their sins. I want to kind of lead up there, and so it'll take me just a minute to lead up to chapter 8. If you read chapter 1 and 2 and encourage you to read that, go back. Anybody know what meditating on the Scripture means? It means bringing it back up. It's like a deer with a cud. Uh, there, they eat the Brother Jesse, and then they bring it back up and they chew on it. So I pray that you'll chew on this this week. Uh, Amos tells us there in that chapter of the judgment that was coming upon those surrounding nations. Uh, in chapter 3 here, he's warning the Samaritans of her luxurious palaces there. How about America? They had built them out of the blood of the poor. I can tell you if you read James chapter 5 verses 1 through 5, you can see some of the similarities that are going on right here in America. So hold on with me. I want to show you something other. And now notice here, there was such heartlessness that it would even shock the Egyptians and the Palestinians and the heathens around them that was going on. Amos chapter 4 tells Tells us, or Amos is telling them to prepare to meet your God, seeing that you failed to respond to God's chastening hand. And there, the love that Israel must now get ready. I thought about the love. God loves His children. He sends things along. Storms and troubles come our way is a means of God chasing us. Even pandemics like we've got going, I believe this is a means of chasing chastening in the church for us to wake up to what time it is and the hour. It's time for us to meet our maker. Soon the Lord will come and we want to be ready when he comes. There's a spiritual famine today going on in our land. And so I look at this here and they had failed to respond and so James Amos is telling them get ready to face God's justice, his wrath. In chapter 5, 
There's a plea to seek the Lord and live. I continue to see. You don't got to tell what he's going to do, but then he gives them an opportunity to turn away from their sins, to get things right with God. And she's to remember. Remember. Do you remember that in Revelation 3 or chapter 2 there where God tells their Ephesus to remember what her first loved, to remember where she had fallen to. You know, we need to remember what where the Lord brought us from and where we could be at tonight. Oh, don't let me ever forget. I may not, I may have come to church tonight. Tired in my body, my voice is somewhat tired, but I come to give praise unto the Lord. I don't know where this will be the last preaching message that I have, but I'm going to praise him while I have my being. I'm going to give glory unto God. If I can do anything, I'm going to do what Paul encourage Paul to do I'm going to stir up the gift of God that is within me I'm going to praise him and give him glory Amos is telling them to remember that once she was a chaste virgin separated to serve the Lord but now she was fallen for other lovers or fallen out here for other lovers hollers and abominations there and there he's telling them if they are to avoid the coming wrath if they're to be spared death, oh, they must seek the Lord and not her idolatrous rituals, their form, form of worship. Does not Paul tell us there in Timothy there'd come a time that men would have a form of religion but deny the power thereof? I don't want nothing to do with a form. I come to worship him in spirit and in truth. He's Lord of lords. He's King of kings and I'm going to praise him. I don't want to be a part of the famine going on in Christian of the day I want to give him praise and glory and honor that he's deserving of in not only in not only preaching but living the word of God before before others in chapter 6 they felt themselves secure but a woe is pronounced notice Amos chapter 6 and verse 1 woe unto them that are at ease in Zion does that sound like us Somebody help me tonight. We've got at ease. We've got our ticket and we think everything's all right. Amos shocked him in chapter 6. He said, you're wanting the day of the Lord. He said, but you ain't, it ain't going to be like you think it's going to be. Judgment was coming to him. I'm afraid anybody know where judgment Brother Mike's coming to? It's coming to the house of God first. I say, Lord, help me, Sister Florida, every day of my life I'm searching my heart. I'm searching my life. Oh, yeah, I've got my ticket, and I don't have to worry about it. I believe what those other folks said. My past sins are forgiven. My present sins are forgiven. My future sins are forgiven. I don't have to do no more repenting. Oh, I come by to tell you, that ain't, that ain't what the Lord's prayer and model prayer is to us. There every day I'm praying, Lord, lead me not into temptation. I don't want to be a part of the spiritual apathy that is in the body of Christ today. I believe it's time for the church to stir up Oh, her their minds by way of remembrance don't let me forget where you brought me from where I ought to be Paul never forgot his road to Damascus experience of where the Lord brought him from I can tell you I was way down but he had an arm long enough to reach down and lift me up out of the hall of a pit so Amos tells him over and over Amos warned him of their ease and their luxury their feeling of security. People have begun to bicker. People are fighting among themselves when we need to be seeking God like never before. When they begin to look around, they look into other nations for help instead of their God. This kind of pride is not, would not go unpunished. Chapter 7. Now notice something. Other Amos here has three visions of destruction. He saw grasshoppers coming. Anybody know that grasshoppers was all over everywhere, Africa and places there by the billions, symbolizing destruction of the land. And Amos interceded and God relented. And then he saw a fire, another symbol of coming destruction. And here Amos interceded and God relented again. That means he changed his mind. But then we have the plumb line. That means God measured the city for destruction. Is God measuring America? 
Oh my. Christ God had changed his mind because of the prayers of Amos. But no more he had punished. He had punished and punished. He had forgiven and given. And now this time they have hopelessly crossed the line. God is about to do something other that they thought would never come. Look at chapter 8. And in chapter 8 there, as I read in your hearing, verse 11, look at something other in the first verse. He saw a basket of summer fruit. And so this is a picture that sin belies, the sinful kingdom that was ripe for judgment. If only they had an ear to have heard the warnings was back up into chapter 7 and chapter 8 there. If you looked at it from Bible numerics as a new beginning, God's about to do something other different than he had before. He had showed mercy over and over again. God has showed mercy unto this nation over and over again because and the blood that she shed, the laws that she's passed have been wicked but I'm telling you I believe God now is looking down and we've got a summer basket that is ripe for judgment and God is going to bring judgment upon this nation we can sit in our homes and we can think that this nightmare is going away but there's a God in the heaven in whom we move and have our being and he's going to have the final say about it all so this picture here there's only one thing that they can do to avoid it. The callings of Almighty God here to return to them. Their destruction could have been avoided, but now God's patient. He's run a course just like it did in Noah's day. Number verse 5, and they wanted the Sabbath. Listen to this. This sounds just like America. They had trampled on the poor. This is what the Lord showed me right this afternoon as I was studying, preparing to get my mind in for tonight. That's why I thank you for don't coming to me and laying problems on me before I get up to preach. I want to have a mind clear when I stand up. I want to have it clear. As I was preparing, I notice here, they had trampled on the poor. And I'm telling you, America's done this. Watch this. He said they wanted the Sabbath to be over so that they might resume selling the products so that they could deal deceitfully using unjust balances. In other words, there they, they were so caught up in making money that they had little concern about God's word, about advancing the kingdom of God. Oh Lord, don't let me, don't let my passion for lost souls, that's what I was called for. That's what he saved me for. So I could be a disciple and disciple other people and pour into them so we could go into all the world and make disciples and get ready, people ready to meet God. But they're caught up. They're caught up in making money. And there, and I thought about, oh here, we must be careful. Jesus told us about God serving God and mamma. Look at verse 8. And the Lord says, Shall not the land tremble for this? And everyone mourn that dealeth therein. Amos chapter 6 and verse 6. That all of those who experience sorrow. Now this is important. This goes back over to Ezekiel chapter 9, I believe it is, and verse 4. I'm telling you, if you're not weeping over the sins of this nation, not experiencing sorrow, the, God is telling Amos they're the only people that are going to escape the judgments of God. Those who he has marked those who are weeping, those who are sighing. I get calls and I hear about what people are doing. I'm talking about people who were one time, Brother Mike, on fire for God. You'd never heard of, of them doing the things that they're doing. They're not how the, the mean spiritness that they are. It's a mean spiritness that when you send out stuff there, it ain't a love of Christ that's there. You send it out stuff there, it's hateful speech. It's everywhere. It's on the news. And it's affected some in the body of Christ. But I refuse to let it affect me. I'm going to stay sweet in my spirit. I'm going to love Jesus. I'm going to love my enemies. I'm going to bake them a cake. I'm going to turn the other cheek because I can never overcome evil with evil. Never. And Amos here is telling them here that those who are experiencing sorrow for the sins of the people what a glorious promise here is promised to them. They who accept and hold to his promises. Israel's famine could have been avoided if they'd have listened. Now that they have refused the word and rejected his hand of mercy. Look at verse 9. The sun will shine till noon. 
And the rest of the day will be dark. That's what's going to happen in the tribulation period. I can show you in Revelation. So we're seeing a similar uh, here. Uh, uh, there are uh, uh, similarities here in, in Amos as also in Revelation in verse 10. And I will turn your feast in the morning. I'm telling you there are parties. The party's about to be over. If some of those there are far as in this election, those if Donald Trump, I don't know what the outcome's going to be, Brother Mark, but I'm telling you they'd have been marching in the street if Donald Trump had got elected. The elements are going to be in the street. They're going to be marching because Biden got elected, but he ain't going to be president to start with. There's somebody else in there. He's just a puppet on the string. There's a one world order coming, but I'm telling you there's also another one world order coming, and that is Jesus Christ as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He will have the final say. God is trying his best to wake America up and we've not been listening but I refuse to give in to the spiritual apathy oh, that's going on today. I'm going to praise the Lord from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, hallelujah. The sun is going to stop shining, he's saying. It's going to come to noon. The rest of the day is going to be dark. He said there, you won't mourn over your sins and repentance, so I'm going to cause you to mourn over the consequences of sin. So he said, all your songs in the lamentations, and I will bring sackcloth upon your loins and baldness upon your head, and I will make it as the mourning of an only son. Oh, my they could have avoided this if they'd only heard the message. Brother Jesse, I'm wearing out. I've been preaching 30 years. It's like Brother, brother, uh, brother Loftus said when he was at Gastonia for 19 years. He said, I primed this pup and I primed this pup. He retired. I think it was at 66. Then he went to evangelizing. Brother Jesse, I'm not looking to retire. I'm looking to go up because I believe we're right on the time. And if he saved me for the last, I want to run my last mile home. I want to lift him up and magnify him. Oh, God ain't done with us yet. The church is still the salt and the light. God's not finished with us. Don't be a part of the spiritual apathy, lethargy, complacency, and lack of commitment in this day, but stir up the gift of God that is within you and make your calling an election sure. Woo! My Lord, help me tonight, Lord. In verse 8, the Lord says, Shall not the land tremble for this? If you, verse 9, the sun would stop shining. They took sackcloth on. And this same kind of day in our day is going on today. We'll come like Israel. Same kind of day. Upon the nation, I believe especially America, when the lost, they're going to cry out. There's a day coming they're going to cry out for the mountains to fall on them and hide them. Listen at me carefully. The days of their stealing from the poor is almost over. Do anybody know what that is? That's a lottery. Ain't nothing but a solicitation of the poor. Brother Edwards told me that four in the county of Four Oaks, that little small county, is the fourth largest lottery buying tickets in North Carolina. It is not the rich that are buying lottery tickets. It is the poor that can't hardly get along from week to week. I'm telling you, I was infuriated when I saw a man walk in to get lottery tickets and this church paid for his light bill. You quiet on me now. Now you, you, you tell me what, what are you talking about, preacher? Sister Brenda, we've got people that's been in this church when I was here the first time. They didn't have a whole lot of money to give, but they paid their tithes. I want to be a feudal servant, a steward over God's, what God has blessed us with. And then that man, he's bound. I understand that. But don't come back to the church a few months later and expect me to pay it again. You lost it. In fact, that person had over $100,000 in a lawsuit a year before and gambled it all away. That's not God's fault. 
we're caught up in the things of this world and think things will suffice. But I got news for you. I believe there's something other about to burn in America. David Wilkerson saw a thousand fires burning in New York City. Demetria Duterman saw in New York City, in San Francisco, in Miami and Nevada, all five were, or four were burning at one time. What are you saying, preacher? I think God is about to say enough is enough and he's going to draw the line. But what is he saying to us? Don't be caught up in the spiritual apathy and lethargy and complacency, but stir up the gift of God that is within you and be ready to go when he comes. They refuse to listen. They were stealing from the poor. Be over and holding back the wages. This is what they were doing. Can I tell you shutting down this economy is doing the same thing in America, around this world. All those that are worried about your safety. I ain't throwing no stones. I'm mad at the devil because we're not seeing it. It's more than about your safety. It's about an agenda that they can bring you underneath their control. They don't want you to live in freedom. They don't want you to stand up and say, God bless America. They want to be a Reverend Wright who stands up and uses God's name in vain. From a pulpit. God's about fed up with it and he's saying enough is enough. And I'm telling you, judgment is going to start in the house of God. I'm not here to beat you up tonight. I'm here to stir up your pure minds uh, by way of remembrance. Uh, it's almost over. And don't get caught up uh, in this apathy of our day. So now, they're taking wages. Can I tell you something? Since they've shut the economy down, Brother Mac, the men that have got the money, 58 58 men got over half of the wealth in the world. Their, their wealth went up during this time $848 billion. The same thing was going on in that day. They were holding back their wages, selling your goods with false scales, balances. They wanted to shut that cow farmer down. Had hog, they wanted to shut them down, Brother Jesse. They even had them going out euthanizing them. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to get you there under their control. So they've got to destroy you to bring them under their control. So you'll come to them and say, now you can have my house and you can have my car. Just give me something to eat. That's communism. We're not seeing it, church. And it breaks my heart and I'm crying as loud as I know how. But it's time the church fall on our faces before God and cry, oh God, have mercy upon our ignorance of what's going on. Oh my, that's what happened in Noah's day. Those before us, we choose willful ignorance. We've got more concern over a cell phone, a computer, a television than we have of getting in the book and finding out what God God is about to do. God is about to do something. And if we've ever got in our secret closet a prayer and prayed, we need to pray, church. Woe unto them that are at ease at Zion. Where's our brokenness? Spiritual famine, apathy. I want to tell you, I'll always look forward to Sunday night service. You know why? Because people won't in no hurry to go home. And they come expecting God to visit with them. I don't know where you're expecting God. Listen here. I know people and some of them probably watching me on there say, Preacher, you're throwing a stone. Absolutely not. No, because if I'm pointing a finger at you, will you please be careful to see how many's pointing back at me? There's four. No, no, no. Have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? It's time for the church to wake up. This government, this governor does not care anything about the church. He'd like to shut it down as the one in California. 
My blessed God, anybody hearing me tonight? My Lord, I'm afraid I'm going to get COVID. But there's a God in heaven who heals. And if he don't heal, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I don't have anything else to look forward to apart from Jesus Christ coming to take me out of this world. I may not even get into the others tonight. They were stealing. They were in moral rottenness. You know what they did with their scales? And you tell me this don't go on today. My friend, Brother MacArthur Beasley, a Jew, Brother Mark, he would carry a bushel of peas into that grocery store. A bushel of peas is a basket there. Let's just say it's 50 pounds. That's what a, uh, but it's not. Don't, uh, peas don't weigh that much. A bushel of sweet potatoes used to be, and they cut it down to 40 pounds. But he said, I'd take a little bushel in there and said, I watched him. He'd take that bushel, Brother Jesse, if he carried him four in it and make five out of it. Did you hear what I just said? He'd sell them a bushel of peas, but it wasn't a bushel. It's three quarters of a bushel, Brother Mike but he'd sell it to them for the price of a bushel. That's what Israel was doing. And they think God's saying, you think you're going to get by with this? They were playing the prostitute, swearing, stealing, oppression, adultery, and murder is about to become bitter. You had it in for a season, but now your season is over. Can I tell you I ain't too sure that our season, Brother Mike, is not about over. Hillary Clinton... Bill Clinton, Joe Biden, all them folks that's been doing their rottenness and sold this nation out. You shouldn't call names, preacher. Paul did. <clears throat> They're rotten to the core. They don't care a thing in the world about you. They've sold us out. Listen, I ain't putting Donald Trump up to no savior but he did give up his salary <laughs> that does say something it does say something I'm telling you they ain't giving up their salary they're going over yonder to China they're going over yonder to Russia and they're selling this country out and you know what's going to happen they're doing it brother Brother David, from within. The corruptness, the rottenness. It's always been that way in a superpower. They rotted from within. Oh, this is a mighty nation that God raised up. One nation under God with Judeo-Christian principles. But we have become so blessed. And we've got so much that we don't even think we need to pray. And thank God for a glass of water. But I'm thankful for a good glass of water and the food he puts on my table and the strength that he gives me. I've got to praise him. It's in him. I move and have my being. Famine. Spiritual famine. People don't have a hunger for God no more and the longer they stay out of church the less the mo the, it's going to get worse. Going to get worse. Not throwing no stones. Isaiah said to they were like Judas. In that time there, there's coming a time when they're gonna throw their money back. They're gonna throw it back. There's a consequences for not hearing the word of God. God will send a spiritual famine, and I believe that's what's happened. But I say, Oh God, help me. My Lord, I almost feel like quitting because I feel such a burden I never thought I'd see this can I tell you something other than I miss it I miss this sister when the old timers would gather around the altar and when you got in an altar to pray you didn't get up until you got what you needed they were there with you well preacher you know what's going on yeah I do and as old as he are you hearing what I said? This ain't caught him by surprise. He has not given us a spirit of fear. 
If not, I don't find it in the Bible. I do understand. Now listen, if it had been a bad pandemic, why didn't they shut everything down? They only shut certain things down. You know why? Because they want that other to go out of business to bring you under their control. Preacher, you don't know what you're talking about. Listen at me carefully. Do you know they have genetically engineered seed where you can't plant it the next year? Tell me why. You still could save your own seed and plant it, Brother Mark. They've genetically engineered. Why? So you'd become under their control. And it's going to come a time that you're not going to even be able to go to the hospital unless you have a mark. You ain't going to buy, neither sell, or do anything. They're going to bring you under their control. I watched a man, and they took it off, the, off of that page. He stood up and told him. He said, this is exactly what you're doing. They took it off my wife's page. They are sensing and do censoring. Let me say something to you. They've already got a cure for COVID, and they don't want the world to know about it. It's worked over and over again. They stood up and told that there are many times of what they've got if you went in the hospital, but they won't let them use it. Why? That devil knows, and God is allowing him his agenda. He's moving it forward. And we, the church, in spiritual apathy, are not seeing what's going on. I say, oh, God, I want to tell you something, other. My Lord, i got to quit. I may have to come back and let you know about what those family or just briefly go through them. Oh, my, but I'm telling you, that devil is a defeated devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Victory shall be mine if I hold my peace. Let the Lord fight my battle. You don't have to give in to what the devil is doing today. He's trying to discourage you, trying to get you down, beat you down mentally. There will you succumber and give up in defeat. But if you'll gird up the loins of your mind and you'll start praising the Lord. I choose to praise the Lord today. Open up that door. Get your broom. Sweep that devil out of that house and go around praising the God. You will not. Devil, give me that spirit of fear. I know I fight the devil just like you do but I'm going to praise the Lord and I'm telling you I believe if I praise him he's got to go. He's got to If I submit myself to God and resist the devil he'll flee from me. <coughs> Almighty God help me tonight. I'm just going to briefly mention this and I'm going to close. I could come back because I ain't even got off page two. My, my, my. What kind of famine is being sent today? Is a famine of preaching the word of God. But Paul urged Timothy to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke. He told him to preach. Romans 1 and 15, so as much as in me is I, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel. He even said in 1 Corinthians 9 and 16, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. The second thing of a famine is a hearing of the word. The word, we hear it. We hear it. We're like that fellow that's up singing the song. Anybody ever seen it? I can't. Now, listen, you know sometimes a picture's worth a thousand words. That fellow's up singing. He's got a guitar. He's got a harmonica. And he's singing this song. In one ear and out the other Never forgot it. Hit the harmonica, Brother Mike. Never missed a beat. I mean, he said in one ear and out the other. Kept right on singing. Oh, my. Oh, my, my, my. Help me, Lord. I don't want it to go in one ear and out the other. Have a famine. And Amos said, how can we walk together except, or can two walk together except they agree? The third thing is a famine of keeping the word. In Psalms 119, verse 11, I love it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. Receive James 1 and 21, the reengrafted word of God. That means the implanted word. That when the devil comes and says to do something to tempt you that's wrong, you say, no, I can't do that. Why can't you do it? It'll affect my relationship with the Father. Get out of here. Get out of here, devil. I ain't doing it. The fourth thing is those of reading the word of God. 
If they only would read it, they would surely avoid the coming tribulation. But they're not reading it. They're not reading the word today. In Psalm 19, in Psalms 19 verses 7 through 11, I love this. You want to get a hold of it. You may preach on it sometime. The Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoice in the heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter than honey in the honeycomb. Moreover, by them thy servant is warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. The last one tonight. The fifth famine that he sent is a famine of the power of God. Where's the power today? We stand up and sing, we got the power. Kind of reminds me, and listen, I'm just as guilty as anyone else. I'm praying and asking God. I don't want attention called upon myself. But it reminds me of Jesus up on the mountain, transfiguration, which is a type of the church. And when he come back down off of that mountain, there was nine disciples down there, and they couldn't cast the devil out of that little boy. And Jesus sort of rebuked them. There are people today that are bound. And if you've ever prayed, they're going to start coming, I believe, to the church. Because as this thing starts shaking up, they're going to be looking. You know, I didn't think this morning I, I preached, and maybe it was because folks was listening. I felt like, I, Brother Hartley, I was pulling. You've been there before. I felt like I was pulling this thing by myself. I got home, and there was a long note on it. Said preacher said, I knew when you said that God had give you another, sent you in another direction, that you was going to be preaching right to me this morning. And I thought, wow, Lord, I had no idea. He said some very things that I've been dealing with you talked about this morning. I said, wow. If it weren't for but one person, it may not have been nobody here in the house, but it was somebody watching this online that needed to know that there was a God in the heaven, that there was a Christ. He's still the head of the church. And no matter what goes on, he's still head. He's still Lord of lords and king of kings. So amongst the midst of the spiritual famine, stir up the gift of God that is within you. Would you stand? The power of God. Israel. He's telling them in chapter 9. There's only one way to avoid. What's coming. He's telling them that those sinners was not going to escape. They could hide. But he's going to search them out. And he's going to find them in the mountains. In the bottom of the sea. Even though they were God's people, God would judge them for their sins as well as anyone else. I believe this tonight, and it breaks my heart because I believe God's going to judge the church for her sins. I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of a preacher standing behind the pulpit and not warning people of what's coming. Listen, I can't search your heart. I have no, but I got every right to judge your doctrine. And if you believe that Christ left the portals of glory, laid aside his position, his privileges in heaven, to come down here and be beat on and spit upon and a crown of thorns to be placed upon his head for you to keep on in your sins is something other wrong with your understanding in scriptures. He didn't come to leave you in your sins. He come to lift you up out of that heart of a pit and bring you into a banqueting house and wash you in his blood and write your name in the Lamb's book of life. paid a debt I couldn't pay my prayer is Lord draw me nearer to you Lord I want to walk as close as I possibly can I don't want to see how close I can get to this old wicked world and make it to heaven but I want to see how close I can get to him I don't know about you but I want to give this order call this way tonight who in here don't want to be a part of that spiritual famine that's going on of apathy, lethargy, and complacency? I understand sickness. But I'm telling you, 
I'm accountable to God. Well, honey, I just think, what about, what about this? And some people may think that I'm, no, I ain't throwing no stone, but what about this? What about if I just stayed in the parsonage and y'all just keep paying me a check and I say, well, I know I don't want to preach because I'm afraid I'm going to get COVID. I ain't throwing no stones. I'm just trying to be realistic. Don't ask me to go to the hospital. I understand people's got breathing. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about there are folks who could be in the house of God who choose not to be. They're neglecting God's house. It's a command. Not an option. He wants you to be fed. I may not be the best feeder. But I tell you, Sister Florida, I pray and seek God. I ain't come to beat you up. I come to stir you up and to realize we're accountable to God. We shut the church. I'm not trying to be a rebel. Ninety-nine point nine percent of people who catch COVID survive. They didn't shut it down when we had the flu, when there was an Obama administration, and sixty-six million people caught whatever that was. Sixty-six million. I'm just being realistic. Ain't been 66 million in America caught COVID. I believe this is what's going on, church. And God is letting them go on, going on with their agenda. They're doing everything they can to destroy the businesses and the little man. Y'all listening at me? So that they will be under their control. They'll provide the jobs for them. Once they've done it and destroyed it, mark it down. That's what's going on. But I'm not going to give in to the spiritual apathy. No, 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 no. Pre preacher, be careful. I'm doing my best to be careful. I may, we may have to shut the church down again because somebody called. I'm going to do everything I can to try to keep you as safe as I possibly can, but I want to tell you I cannot keep you safe. Only He can. The government wants you to think that they can keep you safe from disease, from accident. When you get on the road, they can't stop you from having a car accident. No. The only one that can keep us safe is Christ. I'm in His hands. I'm in His care. And I want to praise him. Could I give this order call? This way you may do it right where you at. But I just think we ought to get down and uh, make us an order and pray and thank God for keeping us and remind the Lord of Psalms 91 that the Lord will keep us. Oh God, help me, Jesus. He's still God. 